It's absolutely insane that you can have an AI data scientist that is almost like Devin, but except that you don't have to wait for Devin and you can use that AI data scientist to completely create an analysis report without touching a single line of code. This video, we're going to discuss about a product called Julius and thanks to Julius for sponsoring this video. In this video, I'm going to take a Kaggle data set that is very recently uploaded so that you know that it is not part of the training data set of any of the models. You're going to use this 184 MB data set and include it in Julius and then start doing some kind of analysis that might give us a useful insight. First of all, where did this data set come from? So this data set comes from LM Sys Chatbot Arena. If you're following our channel, you know that this is a leaderboard that I trust the most. This is a benchmark where two models fight each other. I mean, not technically fight, of course, two models give you the response back and the user votes on the model. And this data set is quite interesting because this can help you identify a lot of things. For example, what made a model win? What is the length of the text? Blah, blah, blah. So what we're going to do is first, I've already downloaded this data set and it is available inside my local computer. And I'm going to use this data set inside Julius AI and then do analysis and create a report out of it. So Julius AI has a very simple to use interface and you can ask the AI to code in R and Python. So if you're a fan of Python, just go with Python. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to upload the file, go to file section, click upload the file and once you click upload the file click train.csv so at this point we are uploading the file that we downloaded from kaggle on which we want to do some analysis julius also has got some extensive documentation for you to understand what kind of things that you can make with julius whether it is building marketing campaigns or predicting future or building forecasting models you can do all these things with Julius because this is what data scientists do. Most tools do not know one thing that is data cleaning. So we're going to start this with data cleaning. In fact, we're going to start this with just simply saying, I want to clean the data. I'm not going to say anything else. So select this here, click chat with files. And this is how our file is. You can see the spreadsheet. If you want to structure the data in the AI friendly format, you can do certain things. I'm not going to do that. By default, Julius gives you 15 calls every month and uh, there are different models available and there are different tools available, but I'm going to go with the default model here. I'm going to just go ahead and then say that I want to clean this data first and then make some useful insights and uh, insights like did the length of the response have any impact on the winning winning model maybe yeah send this now you can see that it is connecting to julius for the first time your data is already uploaded first it is going to load the data and then do it and while you can see that it is writing python code for everything that you say so whatever we just said it is going to first translate it into python code and you can see that it starts uh, looking at things where you can clean so for the first thing okay can we fix missing values? If there are missing values, we're going to fix it. If there are data types that are not appropriate, we are going to ensure that they are appropriate. We're going to add a column to calculate the length of the response because that is one of the insight that we are looking for. And we're going to normalize the text data if there is that is required. Like for example, converting everything to lowercase, removing extra spaces. This is an interesting attribute because I've seen a couple of tools uh, that uh, tries to be an AI data analyst of per se, but they don't necessarily do data cleaning well. In fact, a lot of companies employ fresh graduates only to do data cleaning while the experienced graduates will end up becoming like statistical model builders. So it is, it is quite handy to see that you can do data cleaning here. And uh, then it goes on with the next step. Then it checks a bunch of things. And here are the average lengths of winning and losing responses of each model. And as you can see here, model A average length of winning response is 1567. Model A is 1276. Model B winning response 1569. Model B losing response is 1269. So it appears, as you can see, like very immediately, you can see, see, it appears that the winning responses tend to be longer on average for both the models. I was going to just say that, can you make a chart out of it? But we already have a box plot which is one of the most appropriate visualization for this in this particular case. 
for us to compare the median. But you know what, when you see this box plot, the outliers kind of drag your chart, so you don't get to see. So I'm going to just say the, the box plot is nice, but the outliers make it hard to understand the average slash median slash median do you have any other charts or different variations that's it i'm going to just say this and it is going to explore different options so one thing i would say is first okay probably it will remove the outliers or it seems like it's trying to create a violin plot and while it is going to create a violin plot um, it's trying to show that you know the median would look much clearer violin plot is nothing but a box plot but in a violin kind of a shape i used to love violin plots back in the day when i used to make a lot of charts with the c bond and mat bond slints vary between winning and losing responses of each model so maybe i don't want to get into these things but i want to see let's say um, the winner models okay so i want to see uh, which model wins the most make it make a chart of the most winning model cool that's it I, it's a very simple chart i expected to make it like quite straightforward so for a uh, model a all you have to do is you have to look how many times model a was a winner for model b you have to look how many times model b was winner and you make a chart and uh, that should technically do it and as you can see here um this video wouldn't be by this time even 10 minutes longer but within less than 10 minutes we have successfully managed to get one insight which is about response length for both winning and losing models or responses and we started looking at charts uh, the chart let's say the x-axis uh, y-axis has a lot of overlap so let's try to cut it down the y-axis and the chart the chart has a lot of overlap perhaps reduce the number of models shown okay so i'm asking you to reduce the number of models uh, assuming that if you clip the number of models you will have a better chart the things that i like about this chart one uh, the gradient or the theme here the color palette is quite pleasant which is something that i usually like but the bad thing is i don't like that it managed to even create the plot with all these things there so it could have done it but uh, yeah in this case it it did so there is some clipping in the model name but you can see the top 10 models and you can also notice the title change in the chart so the first chart shows total wins by model the second chart shows total 10 top 10 models by total wins i think this is a very interesting aspect because at this point you might even ask me okay i have got a chat gpt plus subscription 20 dollars a month has the same facility why would i use this i think this is exactly why you would probably use it because if you want to use ChatGPT Plus just for the sake of using a chatbot, then it makes sense. But if you want extremely good quality data scientist use cases, then probably you can use this. So this is this is what you see here. Uh, you can ask her to build a model. Like for example, I can say, can you build a build a statistical model to predict if a given response like, hello, I can't answer prefers model a or model b i should say prefer would be winning or losing would be winning or losing so i'm expecting it to build a model as simple as something like a logistic regression to see if this particular response uh, can give me uh, a score okay so if you have ever built a model with text data set, the first thing that you need to do is you need to vectorize the text data set. And there are a couple of techniques that are available on one of the technique that you would typically follow is like TF-IDF, term frequency, inverse document frequency. And it says, okay, I'm going to prepare the target variable. I'm going to split the data. I'm going to train a model. And I'm going to evaluate the model. Okay, it, pre it did everything. And we have got the result. Uh, the accuracy is quite not, ba not bad, honestly speaking. But that is primarily driven by zero, as you can see here. And that is also primarily driven by the sample. Uh, we have a uh, over sample. Uh, it seems the over sampling is, it seems, it seems uh, the class imbalance is affecting. Let's see. I'm not going to even say anything else. I'm not going to give an action. I'm just saying that the class imbalance is affecting. So I wanted to notice that there is class imbalance. Okay, of course. 
started using IMB Learn, and uh, this can help you with class imbalance. Moat is a very popular technique. This is where your domain expertise could come into play if you are a data scientist. But if you are not a data scientist, you are not going to look for edge cases. And uh, once again, uh, that it started doing the class imbalance rebalancing, and it's going to build a model and then give us a report. I'm going to stop this here at this point. They've got a bunch of tools available for you, like the internet available, the code, running Python code in a sandbox environment, which is what we did, and it created the plots. They have something called advanced reasoning, and you can try that out if you want. And they've got a community forum in which you can just go discuss strategies and approaches. I've got a lot of models available, but I think the free version, when you start trying, I think it'll come with GPT 3.5. Uh, once you have paid version, which is like $20 a month, I guess. So you have all the access all these different models available. But anyways, I would strongly encourage you to test it out. And uh, what we did is basically we took LMS's data set, very similar like what people do on Kaggle with the notebook section. Instead of using a human data scientist to do that, we used Julius AI to do the same thing. Quite happy with the result. And uh, thanks to Julius for sponsoring this video. The link will be in the YouTube description for you to check it out. They have got a free plan that gives you 15 prompts 15 discussions i guess chats uh, a month and uh, check it out see you in another video happy prompting